on to the Krebs cycle. Uh, the Krebs cycle is honestly my favorite. Um, I don't even know why. It's just really cool. Uh, the Krebs cycle was discovered by somebody called Hans Krebs back, I think, in the 1930s. Um, it's also called the TCA cycle and the citric acid cycle. So, yes, it has multiple names. Um, I have this in here just as like if you look at the different charts online, you're going to see these names uh, pop up from time to time. I think actually in our book, it actually said, or, or calls it the citric acid cycle. I like it as the Krebs cycle, whatever. Just learn, just learn that there are multiple names here. Location, it's in the mitochondrial matrix. Uh, ATP, B, ATP is produced through substrate level phosphorylation, uh, like we talked about in glycolysis. And this turns every uh, twice for every glucose molecule. Now, why did the prep step turn or, or occur twice for every glucose? Is because we got two pyruvates from one glucose. The same thing is going to happen for the Krebs cycle. You're going to get two acetyl coas from the prep step, which are going to go both go through the Krebs cycle. Here's another video I really wanted to show. So um, I'm just not going to have the audio play. You can see here, this is the mitochondria. We have our outer membrane, our inner membrane, and we have our mitochondrial matrix. This is the uh, concept, or this is one of the main themes in this class, is complexity increasing. You're going to see here that it's not just liquid. There are tons and tons, thousands and millions of different, different enzymes in here. We can see different molecules. We can also see DNA here. Understand that it, it is even more complex than this. We're also going to see this enzyme we saw in photosynthesis called ATP synthase in the mitochondria. So understand that there is a lot of reactions going on here, and there's just a lot of molecules, a lot of enzymes here in the mitochondria. It's not simple. It's very complex here. Um, I'm just going to let this play out here a little bit. Again, it is complex. I just love how beautiful this looks. This is like art to me. I, I know I say that from time to time, but it's just so, uh, just so complex and so just, you know, again, beautiful. Hooey. Yeah. I'm just going to let you uh, write this down. So what I would do is I'd pause <clears throat> and uh, write all this down. This is difficult. So the great thing here is um, we don't have to memorize a lot of names. Again, I'm only going to be looking at carbons in the molecules. I'm going to run through each one of these steps just kind of quickly. I'll show you this more on an image and it's going to make a lot more sense. The acetyl-CoA, which is again, two carbons, is going to enter and join with the uh, molecule called oxal acetate. This is a four carbon molecule. That's going to create a six carbon molecule. So again, think about acetyl-CoA, acetyl -CoA, which is a two carbon molecule. It's going to bond with a, a oxal acetate, which is a four carbon molecule. When you combine those two, two plus four equals six. That six carbon molecule is citrate or citric acid. That's why they call it the citric acid cycle. So now that we have this six carbon molecule, which is a citrate or citric acid, it's going to be, uh, it's going to reduce NAD to make NADH. A carbon dioxide is going to be released and a five carbon molecule is going to uh, be the product. Okay. Now it's going to be called ketoglutarate. Don't memorize ketoglutarate. I'm just understand that we're going to lose a carbon. So we went from six carbons to five carbons in the form of CO2. And the leftover is a five carbon molecule. Now that five carbon molecule is going to go through more reactions. It's going to reduce another NAD, making it NADH. It's also going to produce another CO2 by breaking off that CO2. And it's going to leave a four carbon molecule called succinate. FAD, which is again, another electron carrier is going to be reduced. ATP is going to be formed in the next, in the next step. And it's going to produce a different four carbon molecule called fumarate. Now fumarate is going to help reduce another NAD, making it NADH. It's actually going to produce, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to take in water and it's going to produce a different molecule, a four carbon molecule called oxal acetate. And if you remember, we used oxal acetate here in the beginning. So yes, this is a cycle. This is a cyclic pathway. Um, again, there's a lot of information here. The, no student just reads it's like, oh, I get this totally. This is a difficult concept. What I would do is make sure you can uh, uh, map out or at least try to be able to explain the Krebs cycle when looking at it. I'm going to show you a image, a, a diagram uh, the, of the pathway next here. Here it is. So this does look complicated. Again, there's a lot of names. Don't focus on the names. I want you to focus on the carbons. So I would know acetyl-CoA. It has two carbons, and you can see this coenzyme A. This coenzyme A is going to deliver the two acetyl co or carbon co or let me do this again. The coenzyme A is going to deliver the two carbon acetyl group. This acetyl molecule is going to bond with oxal acetate, which is a four carbon molecule. 
Four plus two is six. This first molecule here is six carbons. This is citrate or citric acid. I do want you to know this, the name here, because again, this is what uh, the, the cycle is sometimes named after. Now, this is going to show you several enzymes. And yes, there are several enzymes here that, that work um, and change citric acid. Um, we're going to lose a CO2 and we're going to produce an NADH. So you can see the CO2 molecule coming off and we're losing this carbon. So ketoglutarate is only five carbons. NADH is then going to, uh, I'm sorry, NAD is going to be per, is going to be reduced and produce NADH. We're also going to lose another carbon in the form of CO2. So you remember, anytime we lo lose carbon, we're losing it in the form of CO2. That ketoglutarate is going to be changed into succinate. Remember, between every one of these molecules, there are several enzymes working here. I don't want you to know any of those enzymes. Um, that's for biochemists to know and not us. Here, now it says that we're going to see GDP in a phosphate group. This essentially uh, turns a uh, ADP into an ATP. So this is uh, a little bit confusing, but just understand that we're going to produce an ATP here. We're also going to reduce FAD and make it FADH2. Remember, NADH and FADH2 are electron carriers. That's going to change succinate into fumarate. Fumarate is a four carbon molecule. This four carbon molecule is going to be changed into oxal acetate by, again, reducing another NAD. Now, remember what I said a couple slides ago. This process occurs twice because we're getting two acetyl-CoAs from the prep step. Good. So what a, another big concept here is these two, these two carbons, they are going to be lost in the form of CO2. So every carbon that we got from glucose is going to be lost in the form of CO2. So when you breathe out, you're losing carbons that you gained from eating glucose, okay? Now, this oxalate is going to be reformed into citrate by bonding another acetyl-CoA. So again, this is a cyclic uh, uh, reaction. But don't think, again, this is going around in a circle like the Calvin cycle uh, in photosynthesis. They don't go around in circles. This all right, so the products here of the Krebs cycle are going to be 4 CO2, 2 ATP, 2 FADH2s, and 6 NADHs. Now, you might look down here and say, hey, Mr. Friedhoff, I don't see that. I see that we're only making 3, 1, 2, and 1. Remember, the Krebs cycle has to occur twice for every glucose molecule because we're getting two acetyl-CoAs from the prep steps. So we got to double everything. So we have four CO2s, we have two ATPs, we have two FADH2s, and we have six NADHs. Now, we've been making a lot of NADHs and FADH2s specifically in the first three steps. These are going to go to something called oxidative phosphorylation down the electron transport chain. That's where it really gets interesting. That's where we make a lot of ATP. So far, we've only made four ATP, two in glycolysis and two here in the, uh, in the Krebs cycle. That's not a lot of ATP here. So um, just try to remember, we have not made a lot of ATP up until this point. That ATP has been made through something called substrate level phosphorylation. Um, and now we have our last step, which we're going to get um, tomorrow.